In I also known as vitamin B8 and this compound has been shown to have some benefits for people with PCOS so before we go into um, a deeper lecture we will take a look at the sources of inositol where you can get vitamin B8 from and we've seen one organ meats so we mean the organs of meats like the liver the kidneys and all that so all organs of meat are sources of vitamin b8 and then fruits are also a very good source of vitamin b8 and we have nuts and then beans and the beans the lima and then the navy beans have been shown to have higher contents of vitamin b8 and brown rice also has a very good level of vitamin b8 and then whole wheat almond grapefruit and then walnut Alright, so inositol is basically, as I said earlier on, is vitamin B8 and it's gotten from glucose. So as you can see from the board, after glucose has been broken down to give us the energy we need, a part of the glucose skeleton is converted into myo inositol. So, so myo to mean muscles. So this inositol is usually found in muscles. And then there's a conversion of myo inositol mi shortcut to d chiro inositol which for short we call dci now what happens is that when there's a conversion from glucose to myo inositol there's some conversion from myo inositol to dci and you are seeing from here that in the ovaries usually the mi to dci ratio is around 200 to 1. And the significance of this is to help with egg or follicle maturation and also improve the quality of eggs. So, and then we also seen from other sides of the non ovary side that the MI to DCI ratio is 40 to 1. And the significance is to help with symptoms of PCOS alleviation and then also helps with ovulation. Now, we need these ratios in all sides in a proportional way. To be able to give us um, the benefit we want. Now, not all PCO patients may have problem with um, egg maturation, and then not all of them to have issues with um, have seeing light flows. Some may have irregular periods. They have a very good flow. Then the period may be irregular. So, depending on what the condition is, these can also help us to do our treatments. So in a case where let's say a patient has PCOS and um, there's a problem with probably egg maturation, that's actually the main problem. So for such a person, we will need um, MI to DCI ratio of 200 is to 1. And there are drugs on the market that contain the MI and the DCI in these proportions or these ratios. So once you consume high amounts of these drugs or you take these drugs, you are likely to help with follicle or egg maturation. So for people with PCOS who have issue with egg maturation, an MI to DCI ratio of 200 is to 1 is good, very good for you. Now, so aside that, for people who have issues with, let's say, ovulation, and which is the main primary symptom of PCOS, we have seen here that a ratio of 40 is to 1 is needed to help with PCOS symptoms alleviation and also helps with ovulation. So whilst this you're taking these for, for a few days to help with egg or follicle maturation, just when before you get to your ovulation, you are switched to MI to DCI ratio of 40 to 1. Yes. Like I said, there are drugs that have these ratios or these drugs in these ratios. So whilst you switch from that to this to take then of course you are going to help with ovulation and that will help you to release an egg or ovulate making you fertile now on the other side of these um, these inositol is that usually pcos patients have very low levels of dci very low levels of dci even though that ratio should be 200 to 1 or probably for 40 to 1 in pcos patients there are very low levels of this and that means that the concentration of this goes very high. So in a PCOS patient, their levels may even be higher than 200 to 1 in all proportions, whether it's in the ovaries or in non-ovaries sites. 
Yeah. And this is actually what causes problems with ovulation and even the symptoms of PCOS. Now, this high low levels of this year has been shown to actually also um, worsen PCOS symptoms. So it's able to cause the uh, hair loss or probably a hair strutism or what we call the um, virulence. Now, when this um, conversion has been restored, a very good amount of DCI is able to help reduce the testosterone levels. We saw that the luteinizing hormone was responsible for testosterone to estrogen conversion. And this reaction actually produces a very small amount of estrogen, which means that we always, or PCOS patients usually have a lot of testosterone levels. Now, this MIT DCI ratio, especially the DCI, is able to help reduce testosterone levels. And this will go a long way to reduce the realism associated with people with PCOS. And then also with the infertility issues. And then also, one last thing is that this uh, inositol is also able to help reduce insulin resistance. So like we said, PCOS patients usually have issues with insulin resistance, meaning that their bodies is able to produce insulin, but the cells of the tissues cannot use it. So they usually have higher levels of insulin. And this inositol helps to combat this insulin resistance. By so doing, the cells are able to use or get they, they are very sensitive to insulin and in that case they are able to use glucose produced from the body for energy production and then also these higher levels of insulin in people with PCOS resulting from insulin resistance it actually what causes them to have acne and <laughs> so, so the higher levels of insulin is responsible for acne in people with PCOS. So if inositol is able to help us combat this insulin resistance, then we are certain that the acne in people with PCOS is also going to be resolved. So inositol actually has a very good role in people with PCOS, as we can see from the board. It targets virtually all areas of PCOS. It helps with egg maturation, it improves the quality of the eggs, and then it also helps with alleviation of PCOS symptoms. And then also it helps with ovulation. And these are mainly the symptoms of people with PCOS. So inositol has a good, a very good place in the management of PCOS. Thank you. Stay tuned.